Hey Team YouTube. Just wanted to do a video with everything put back together and everything buttoned up. So let's go ahead and get started on the 3500 swap, the uh, LX9 and what was uh, going on here. So again, I want to thank, uh, well myself really, but really I want to thank Millsy Motorsports for putting together a kit and some instructions that even someone as hard-headed like me can follow. So, starting, we got the crank, uh, this uh, reluctor reel bolted in, and we have the uh, crank sensor bracket. Uh, one of the things I had to do for my install was this power steering return line. I took it and I bent it down slightly, and I, of course, did the origami knot there with a cable tie on the original bracket just to give it some clearance right here. I didn't have that clearance originally, but thought, you know, it it, it really needs it. Uh, on the uh, sensor plug-in right there, I have a piece of wiring loom that I installed on it, the convoluted tubing, and that is full way all the way up to the coil pack. The other end of this plugs into the uh, coil pack, and uh, everything is looking pretty okay. So let's move up top. There you are, you pesky little power steering pump. I had a problem. I, uh, I bought a brand new power steering pump and just was never able to get it to bleed. So last night I went to my local scrapyard, found a rendezvous of a similar era for a 3400 era power steering pump, cleaned it up, bled it. It had its own issues, but it bled almost right away. Uh, just doing the old back and forth steering wheel trick with the power, you know, with the power off and that sort of business. Moving back to the 3500 swap. Got a new uh, computer bypass cable or a hose here because the one from the uh, motor was just kind of bulging out. Uh, down here is the heater bypass tube. And what I did is I ran a hose, I cut it, it's about an inch of gap, but I made the hose long enough so that the hose clamps go on either side of the dog bone bracket there, and I filled it with a bunch of RTV, and no leaks. Actually, this leaked before this did on initial startup. Moving over to the intake. The intake, because of the throttle spacer there, the, the throttle body adapter plate, whatever you want to call it, um, is just a little closer now. I would recommend this little bellows section here. That is the last one to put on. Uh, this bolted up, got the uh, 3400 throttle body gasket, a new one of those for a few bucks. That wasn't any big deal. Uh, right down there on that rubber bellows, I notched it to clear the uh, throttle body bracket. Um, and then down below, there's a nut under here. Ooh, hot, been running it for a while, check, trying to bleed that power steering pump. Uh, the um, the uh, hole, the through hole that goes through there that goes to a stud on the throttle body, I essentially notched that out on the bottom to uh, make it all fit. It was just coming in where the, the hole was, you know, maybe a little too high and it wasn't lining up with the stud, so I literally just took a, a, a Nipex cutter and cut it so it was a slot, you know, rather than a through hole. And I also uh, used the original, or the, I just used the 3400 uh, coolant hoses there for the throttle body, just trying to keep it kind of stock in terms of what I wanted to do with, uh, you know, the computer and what it's expecting for temperatures here and there. Uh, the evaporator, uh, the evap, solenoid here. I just <laughs> ended up looking at what I needed to do. I had a piece of fuel rated hose uh, lying around and I just went ahead and extended it up here. This is a little, a little bit of a cobble job. There's my uh, cable tie. You'll see that it's kind of a common theme here. Cable ties holding things together. Just kind of lash it up here. It's uh, secure. It's resting on the fuel lines and well, okay, not perfect, but uh, I figure it will be good for many, many miles. Uh, the fuel pressure regulator going back to the back side of the of the intake here uh, my uh, vacuum fitting that I put on it ended up working just fine I 
uh, I maybe mentioned this in a previous video, I had to grind off an ear on the uh, coil pack bracket and the little um, four bolts that go with the, or four screws that go with the, those little fancy coil pack adapter uh, brackets. That's going to be like my word today, bracket. Of course, that looks cherry. I think uh, that's a really well-designed part of the kit. And it keeps the, you know, if you can imagine the, the angle of what the coil pack bracket has to be, it kind of keeps that factory, which is, which is nice. Uh, I uh, swiped some uh, hardware from work to replace the uh, stud that would go there that would hold the plastic engine cover on just with a uh, Allen head button, button head screw uh, and used the uh, 3400 map into the 3500 map sensor. That worked out pretty well. Um, the big cobble job was the uh, where the evap would plug in on the 3500 motor. I literally just cut the sensor and smeared it all up with RTV and put it in that hole. It's not pretty, but you know what? Nobody can see it. Maybe someday if I wanted to dress this engine up, I'd get a fancy powder coated plate. Uh, you know, from Millsy Motorsports, they do offer them. I've probably mentioned that, uh, but we'll see. Uh, the PCV valve, that's a new boot right there, that elbow. Uh, and it goes up and plugs in just fine to the 3500. There's a hole right there. Of course, that leads around to the EVAP. Uh, that all is working good at sealing. I have a nice low, you know, right about 700, 700 RPM idle. So just based on what I know about these motors, I can pretty much be assured of no vacuum leaks. Um, down here, and I don't know if you probably can see the cable tie first, there is the little sensor that comes up off the uh, external crank trigger, the original external crank trigger that is on the 3400, but not present on the 3500. I just lashed it to the dog bone support bracket and kind of snugged it up just to keep it out of the way of the serpentine belt. One thing I will notice about the serpentine, I noticed it is, it feels, it feels just a little bit tighter. You try, I got to pull on the idler just a little harder to, to install the belt. Maybe I'm just imagining things, but uh, either way, it, uh, this looks, you know, it looks factory. It looks nice. So, uh, as far as the rest of the kit goes, uh, the coolant temperature sensor is just out of the way and kind of run away from the, you know, the hot part of the engine right here, which would, of course would be the uh, exhaust heat shield. Try to keep stuff away from that. And, uh, yeah, other than that, um, this thing was a breeze. Uh, I will mention my spark plug wires and stuff like that. Um, it's, yeah, I just have it laying on the engineer. Oh, how glamorous. Uh, I'll come up with something, I think, at some point in time. Frankly, I just want to drive this thing for a while. Um, as far as the heater bypass pipes, and this is something I haven't inspected yet, um, I used the 3500 pipe that comes out of the uh, back of the motor here or the side of the motor and comes up and around to there. It looks like it's pretty close to the wiper linkage. I'll check that real quick. But then the 3400, the, I used the stock coolant bypass and it goes right back there just like normal. On the rendezvous, and I know I've mentioned this before, you have no EGR valve, but you do have this semi-ridiculous bracket that bolts onto where the EGR would go to help isolate that transmission uh, dipstick tube. So um, that is everything, but I'm sure everyone wants to know if the proof is in the pudding. We're going to fire this bad boy up and kind of take a listen for a minute. Engine's warm, so it should be purring and idling and all that sort of stuff. Here we go. Being a person that's driven a 3400 motor since about 2003 on different minivans. Uh, the 3500 definitely sounds different. It doesn't have the the tick, the lifter tick, and the piston slap, especially when pulled. And it's just that you know how you try to get used to you know hearing funny noises when you're driving down the road. Uh, this one, all of the the cues that I hear, I just think, well, I, I guess that's normal. Uh, but let's go ahead and just give it a couple of revs real quick. And uh, my God, that uh, that's good. Now, 
I guess there are critics out there that say, you know, you could just go on out and bought a 2006 Rendezvous uh, because it has the 3500 LX9 in it. And, uh, but you know, uh, sometimes it doesn't come down to what money can buy. It comes down to, you know, what you can do. And, uh, oh look, new battery, new battery. I traded out the battery a couple weeks ago because my son's van died. It's uh, old Silhouette uses the same battery, so I went a couple of weeks with uh, no battery. And finally we got a new battery. It's unbelievable how many things are new on this vehicle now. It should be good for at least, you know, another year of driving. Uh, uh, I want to get at least five years out of this bad boy. So, uh, hey YouTube, I'm rambling now, so I'm just going to sign off. Hope you found it helpful, and uh, there's other videos about this exact swap and all the craziness that went into it. I want to thank some people. Uh, the Mod Everything guy, yeah, he's got some good stuff about the, the 3500, so uh, his, uh, his stuff. And of course, I want to thank Nizzy, Nosey Motorsports for having a, a good kit and uh, some directions that even someone like as hard-headed as me can follow. So I'm going to post this to YouTube. Have a great day.